Did you know that eating undercooked or raw meat is never a good idea? For example, pork harbors certain microorganisms that will not be killed if the cooking process were not done properly. Hence, when the meat is not cooked at the proper temperature, there is a huge risk that those microorganisms will survive and ergo be ingested by us, humans. And this can make us very sick terribly. One of the many parasites found in pork is Trichinella spiralis, a roundworm that causes an infection called trichinosis or trichinellosis. Other animals like wolves, boars, bears, and walruses can also be the carrier of this roundworm. So, you might want to think twice before having that tasty and mouth-watering hot pot every time you went out on a Friday night hangout with your friends. Trichinella is a round worm that can infect rodents, pigs, bears as well as us humans. Isn't that creepy? Sometimes, it is referred to as the pork worm since it can be found in most occasions in undercooked pig products. Here is an illustration and short biography of the male and female adult trichinella. As you can see, the female trichinella is longer than the male trichinella. Wow! Hmm, I wonder what is actually causing this trichinellosis? Based on the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, trichinellosis or trichinosis is caused by eating undercooked or raw meat of animals infected with the larvae of a species of worm called trichinella spiralis. But then, after we consume them, how does trichinellosis develop? Now I'm very curious. It all begins with ingestion of trichinella larvae from the raw or undercooked meat that contains encyst larvae. In the stomach, exposure to gastric acid and pepsin, which is an enzyme, will release the larvae from the cyst. From the stomach, the larvae then will enter the small intestine and invade the intestinal mucosa where they will undergo development into adult worms. The invasion of intestinal mucosa will result in abdominal pain, diarrhea, and vomiting, among others. Female worms shed newborn larvae that are then be carried throughout the bloodstream. Through the bloodstream, the newborn larvae enter the skeletal muscle cells and undergo maturity in the muscle. They get encysts in the skeletal muscle which gives rise to muscle pain, tenderness, swelling, and weakness among others. Oh, so that is how it developed. But what are the signs and symptoms when someone is infected with trichinella? Okay, on early infection, a person may experience diarrhea, abdominal pain, fatigue, nausea, and vomiting. On late infection, it gets worse. High fever, muscle pain, swelling of eyelids or face, weakness, headache, and pink eye may also follow after. If the infection is heavy, patients experience difficulty in coordinating their movements, having heart and breathing problems, and worse comes to worse, it will lead to death. Fortunately, there are ways to diagnose trichinellosis. Aside from history taking and identifying the signs and symptoms of a patient, we can conduct an antibody test on the patient by using the ELISA test kit. ELISA is known as enzyme-linked immunoassay and it is a common laboratory test kit used to detect antibodies in the blood. Polymerase chain reaction or PCR is another common diagnostic method used to accurately detect the presence of trichinella spiralis in the patient. Now, you may ask, is there any way to treat trichinellosis? Lucky for us, yes, it can be treated. To treat trichinellosis, patient is prescribed with antihelminthics such as febendazole or mebendazole by the medical doctor. Prevention is better than cure. Can you guess how do we prevent it? 
The best way would be to cook meat to save temperature according to CDC guidelines. Food thermometer should be used to measure the internal temperature of cooked meat. Do not sample meat until it is cooked. Next, make sure you wash your hands thoroughly with soap and warm water before and after handling the raw meats. This is to prevent the introduction of the larvae to the clean food. Last but not least, we have to keep an eye on the carrier of these roundworm, especially the rats, since we tend to come into contact with them direct or indirectly on a daily basis. So, rodent control must be practiced. It is better to control it earlier than later because prevention is better than cure. Thank you. Bye -bye.